Hello everybody, welcome back to part 2 of the basics of zero ticks. Today I will talk about some of the different zero tick generators and repeaters that we have. Uh, some dual edges and the rest of the stuff. And then at the end of the video we'll talk about some piston layouts and some of the doors I have made that are zero tick. First, I'm going to introduce what bed is or block event delay. Block event delay is something in the game that makes something happen later in the code. So basically, if this piston right here, this sticky piston right here, had more bed than this, then technically in the game's code, it would process this before this. Bed is how all instant zero tick gens happen, how all zero tick repeaters happen, and basically how all zero tick piston doors happen. Block event delay is very crucial. So basically, what block event delay normally is, is uh, the amount of budded pistons that the game has to process before something happens. So in this zero tick gen, as you can see, we have one budded piston here that is in this chain. And the way it'll work is this piston right here will get updated, then this one, then this one. So therefore, the game processes this one first and then this one. So as you can see here, on the falling edge, this creates a zero tick. And as you can see here, if I freeze the game, then I step a single tick, it instantly spits it out. And the piston rendering is just uh, the shaders. As you can see in this little thing here, we have no bed. And if I do it, it's not going to work. You can chain bed together. So this right here, this end piston right here will have had three bed because you have this, 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 and then this. And this is just another way to instantly update pistons that are butted. So note blocks, rails are just some of the things that instantly update pistons. Block event delay is a fairly complicated subject, and I'm sure that there are better people out there to fully describe it. The basics of it is pretty much just the amount of butted pistons. Now we will move on to zero tick repeaters and their uses inside doors. So this right here is a basic downward zero tick repeater. If we zero tick this, it repeats the signal. So if you see here, I just do this. Freeze the game, zero tick this top piston, it repeats the zero tick. And the way it works is it zero ticks this, the redstone block gets here, and then it powers this, which then quasi powers this block, and then it gets updated by this. So technically the game process is this zero tick down and this zero tick up at different times. This zero tick down happens before the zero tick up. And as you can see, if I step a tick, it zero ticks that sand into it. And the sand is just there so that when the sand, it just falls. Then again, you can't just power this top piston because you see, it won't work. This right here is the exact same thing except with an observer, so it's a little less reset. This is a zero tick repeater that works going up. So we zero tick this bottom piston, and it goes like that. The way this one works is pretty similar to this one, except the signal has to travel upwards, so there's a little extra wiring. It travels up here, up here, and then it powers this block right here, which buds this block, and then this piston right here updates it. Basically, all zero tick repeaters have to bud the return piston, I guess you could say, because that's how you're able to use bed. To ensure that all zero tick repeaters work, they have to be using bed because otherwise they're either locational, directional, or if you link them together indoors, they just won't work. Moving on to horizontal zero tick repeaters, we have this one that pretty much everyone has kind of seen one way or another. It works in the same way as that the redstone block gets here, powers this line, then it goes up here, buds the bottom piston, and then this piston updates it. So there you go, see? You can see here if I freeze the game, zero tick this piston, then step a tick, you can tell it zero ticked because this line doesn't appear to be powered, but 
because this return piston is a normal piston, it takes technically two, but three game ticks to get back to here. You can mitigate this by just replacing that with a sticky piston. And then as you can see here, I freeze the game one and it just already back there. That's because when using zero ticks, sticky pistons are the things that instantly put blocks where they are and hit other pistons take two game ticks or three if you're working with other pistons. The main thing with this zero tick repeater over here is that if you take an output out of the bottom, that is really locational. Like that is not good. It won't work in some locations because of dust update order. Again, locationality is a very, 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 very complicated subject and I don't know most of it. So I'm just going to go over the basics here. A good thing to assume with locationality is assume that the dust update order is random. What I mean by this is assume that this, when this gets zero tick, the dust updates say down here, then up here, then over here, then over here. Assuming it's random makes it so pretty much everything is either locational or it's not. It's not a blurry line between it is or it isn't. And as you can see here, this works. But in another location where the dust update order is different, we might have this dust right here update before this top one. And therefore, it won't even work. But here it does. Right here, we have a dual edge zero tick gen that is pretty compact. This dual edge works by basically having an upward zero tick repeater with an update at the bottom. Right here at the bottom, we don't want to have something that just powers this piston because as you can see, it breaks. So instead, what we do is we have something like a note block here that will instantly update this piston and then say have a block right here. And this is your on point. And as you can see there, that's updates it just fine. You can also have dust right here. That updates because dust updates around it. Another thing, when you're building this, in order to place the redstone block in here, you have to put an immovable block above it, place it in, and then break that. Then if you update it, it'll work. Because as you can see, if I just place it in, it'll break. Another way to make this whole thing a bit more compact, but not one wide, is if you take out all this stuff right here, add it in here, change this piston like this, add a note block right here, then run all the dust. Now, it works and it's too wide and a little more compact. Moving on from bed, zero tick repeaters and dual edges, we have some circuits called ABBAs. They're called this because they execute zero tick operations as A, B, and sometimes C. And then if you power them from the other end, they operate C, B, A. The way this works is when we zero tick this, which is the basic zero tick instant repeater thing, it zero ticks this redstone block right here which then buds this and it gets updated with one bed right here. So then this zero ticks this forward, which then makes this retract. So that makes it so this block isn't just sitting here. It's actually right here. And then it does the same except at the bottom and then at the top again. So we can see if I freeze the game, let this zero tick, we can step a single tick. And as you can see, it tra traveled throughout the chain. You can also see back here in this demonstration why this might want to be used. So if I freeze the game, update it like this, you can see we have the blocks in this arrangement right here. Then if I step a single tick, they instantly come to the next place. And you can see the piston heads inside those blocks. Then if we activate it from this end, the blocks will get retracted in three ticks in their order at the same time one two three and you can see how the blocks phased there for a sec that's because the bed happened in the opposite order this type of circuit this abba is the basis of most zero tick doors because you can activate it from one end to do the closing and then activate it from the other to do the opening i use this abba right here in my previous video about a zero tick two by two seamless glass piston door. This ABBA right here is pretty big. So 
a really smart person whose username is this. They also have a YouTube channel created this right here, which is another ABBA, except it uses the zero tick repeaters from over there. The way this ABBA works is you zero tick the zero tick repeater that you want to happen first. So I want this block to come here first and then this one and then this one. So if I freeze the game, zero tick this, you can see one, two, three, everything's right there. And then if I wait for the sand to reset, freeze the game, zero tick the other side, one, two, three, just like that. As you can see, this ABBA has four modules, but only three of the zero ticks were being used for the example. That's because after two instant repeaters like this, it's a good idea to have one in an ABBA that's just not being used. It's just being used to transfer the signal so that you don't have issues with bed and stuff like that. The way this system works is the basic zero tick repeater, except it also starts triggering the other zero tick repeater as it's going along the chain. And at the bottom here, we just have this instant update for when this gets zero ticked and then the updater here and then just two bed for this last one just to make sure it fires at the correct time. Moving on from all zero tick things, in zero tick doors, as you saw before, pistons that are extended take three game ticks, one, two, three, to fully retract their blocks. And that's why in zero tick doors, three game tick delay or odd game tick delays are really helpful. Because say for example, you have a piston that needs to retract this block in three ticks. So one, two, three, and then you want to make this piston come out of the way. You need to have three game tick delay for that last one. Here are some examples of some three game tick delays that are often used. The first is using an observer and scaffolding. Scaffolding enables a one game tick delay when one scaffolding becomes unsupported. So basically the way this would work is you see how it doesn't have this bottom here. It takes one tick for that bottom to appear and observers can detect that. And observers, as we know, take two game ticks to fire. So the way that we can do this, say you have a zero tick from an input, you can just zero tick this piston right here. So if we zero tick this piston right here, we know that it's going to instantly power this, right? And then one game tick later, this scaffolding will update. Then two game ticks later. Another way to do this is with leaf stone or using leaf updates which also cause one game tick delays. So you can see here, if we zero tick that back, then one game tick later, this will update, then two game ticks later, that'll update right there. So that's three game ticks right there. That's just a basic three game ticks. There are other ways to get things to update three game ticks later. There's other things like that as well, but these are the most basic. Another really big thing for zero tick doors is toggles because most of the time for zero tick doors there's operations that need to happen on the closing and then different ones that operate on the opening so say this is the input to my zero tick door i flick it something happens but then this say this is the closing stuff i don't want it to happen when i unflick this and it doesn't because of a thing called a toggle this is the most basic zero tick toggle because the way this works is, even with a zero tick, it'll travel through, and at the same time, the block will be put there. So, you can have toggles to help you have different circuits for opening and closing. That is the most basic wrap of zero tick things that happen in piston doors and other technical Minecraft things. We will now move on to piston layouts for some common doors, and I'll show you a couple of the doors I have made using zero ticks. The first zero tick piston light I'll show you is the most common 3x3 three three instant closing and 0 0.45 seamless opening. This is the piston layout. We have pistons like this. And the sequence goes like this. On the first, 
block of ventilate. We will have this one fire, this one fire, this one fire, this one, this one, this one, and this one. And this one. Then on bed number two, we will have this fire and this fire. Then on bed number three, this. Bed number four, this. Bed number five, this. Bed number six, this. Bed number seven, this. And bed number eight, that. Then for opening, you basically do everything in reverse. So first block of ventilation, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth. Although technically, these pistons that are just putting the single blocks other than these can happen on the first bed of both the opening and the closing. Then, this isn't really a piston layout, but it's the basis of getting blocks to move more than one block instantly. And that's by using double piston extension folds. So basically what happens instantly is this pushes this one forward, zero ticking it, then this, then this. And that's an instant double piston extension. And then for the opening, you would just have this, then three game ticks later, this would happen on the first bed and this would happen on the second. Those I feel like are the most basic zero tick piston layouts that people wanna know. They can pretty much come up with the rest of them by using piston folds like this. Now I will show you some of the doors I have made, starting with my instant 3x3. This right here behind me is my first instant 3x3. It is really large, it's 9 wide, and I don't want to count how long or how tall it is, but it is instant. If I power this while the game's frozen and step a tick, you can see all the blocks are there instantly. And that's because of this first ABBA circuit right here, then some more bed in here, and then this second ABBA circuit right here. Now, I'll show you the opening. If I keep the game frozen, unflick this, the first things that happen are one, two, three, right? We did those first beds right there. Then one, two, three, then one, two, three. Seamless. This door, the hardest part about it, as you can see where the most wiring is, is right on this right side right here. We have so many little inputs where zero ticks need to happen all right next to each other. And that is the hardest part about zero tick door building is the wiring. Because you only need the knowledge to really know where to paste certain ABBAs and certain block of ventilay things and certain inputs. But the hard part is actually figuring out how to put them where you want them to go. I will now hop on to the Synergy server to show you some of the other zero tick contraptions. First one we're going to look at is the same door except with a fix to make it so it's zero reset and spammable right here. So as you can see, I can just spam this all I want and it works. Then over here, we have this instant 3x3 cave and 0 0.45 seamless open that I made with another server member. I know this last block retraction can be done faster, but the way I wired it made that really hard because I used this target block to both power this and this. As you can see, there's that same ABBA circuit that I told you about earlier. This right here is the door I made in my previous video. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, please share it with others. Drop me a like, drop me a sub, I don't really care. Drop me a comment on how I could improve or some information that I could add. Anyways, thanks for watching. See ya.